this morning I'm going to get personal with you. I'm going to tell you one of the, um, <clears throat> one of the big marital strifes in my life, in our house, and that is over the um, location of my phone. <laughs> I can never seem to find it when I'm looking for it or when I need it, and uh, it drives Ben crazy. I put it down somewhere because it's really big, and if you're a woman, you know our pockets are not so big, and it's very hard to keep them in there, and so I take it out and I put it down somewhere and I forget where it is, and, um, and he's always getting on my case about <laughs> finding a way to keep my phone or remember where my phone is, so much that my kids now will bring my phone to me whenever they find it. <laughs> and Joel says, Joel says, Mommy, why are you always putting your phone in weird places? <laughs> and Leia, my one and a half year old, will find my phone and pick it up and say, Mommy, Mommy, and bring it after me. And I'm not making this up. This is so prevalent that last night I had a dream that I was a, I was like a superhero. And I had it, I was with it, I was on a, a team and we were called in to do something. And so we all like, we're in the same house and we all rush out of this house that we're, that we're in. And I say, wait guys, I don't have my phone. <laughs> Well, our gospel this morning is about lost things. It's Jesus' parable of the lost. And I want to focus for us this morning on the lost coin, the woman with the lost coin. Now, Jesus is telling this, and we are meant to understand that in this parable, God is the woman and we, a sinner, are the lost coins, the lost coin. And God will search. God will search and will find us wherever we are. We'll turn over an entire house to seek and find that lost coin. And this is a beautiful image. It's gorgeous. God seeking after us. And it also begs the question, how did that coin get lost in the first place? Because a coin has no will of its own. A coin cannot choose to jump out of God's back pocket. The woman lost the coin. And so doesn't that mean in this parable that sometimes God loses us? Now I have a question and you don't have to raise your hands for this one. Who has ever felt betrayed by God? Who has ever looked around at this world that we live in and amidst the beauty, seen the ugly, and thought, how can God let this happen? This is a question that we study. Theologians attack. We study it in seminary. As priests, we ask, are asked it constantly. Why, how can a loving God let this happen? And there are so many people who try to live good and faithful lives and who feel like God is just slapping them down time after time. Now I'm not trying to make a claim here that God intentionally sends any of us away or that this is somehow God's fault. But isn't it so often the case that we as humans, fallible, confused, humans live our lives and feel, perceive that God has abandoned us, that God has lost us, and he no longer cares. Well, that's where, that's where this parable this morning 
speaks volumes. And it's different from the one that it's paired with, from the prodigal son. Because when Jesus speaks these parables, there, there's three that he speaks. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. But we get the prodigal son later on in our lectionary. And in that story, which most of you know, this younger son, he says to his father, let me have all of my inheritance and I want to leave. And his father listens and he gives it to him. And the son goes off and he squanders it and he makes devastating mistakes and he comes home and his father is waiting for him with open arms. And it's beautiful too. But in these parables this morning, God is not waiting. God is seeking. He is actively seeking. And he's seeking whether you are a sheep that has wandered off and lost your way, or whether you are a coin who God has lost. God seeks. He searches. And he will turn over tables, look in the dustiest of places beneath the couch, just to find you. Even if you think that it's his fault in the first place. The reason you're lost doesn't matter. What matters is that God is going to search for you. Today, my message for you and your job is simple. Often I stand before you and I give you a task to do, something to focus on, some way to better your life, to go out and serve, to be aware of the misfortune of the people around you, to do more even when you're doing so much already. But today, your job is to rest. To rest easy, knowing that God is searching for you. And if you find that you are at this time in your life a coin in God's back pocket, know that he knows you're there. Rest easy in that place of comfort, right with God. And if you find that you are a coin that has fallen under the rug, if you find that you or a loved one feels blame and anger towards God, hold on to that glimmer of faith and hope that you have left, knowing that God is searching for you. God is searching and he will search until he finds you. So my friends, rest, rest easy.